Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the special review of the Intel HD Graphics 4000. No, this isn't a discrete graphics card. Instead, it's an iGPU, an integrated one. You can find these on several Intel 3rd generation Ivy Bridge processors. Of course, since this unit is integrated, you shouldn't expect superior performance, but right away I can tell you it will do just fine for basic usage, such as standard office work or so. Maybe a little casual gaming too. For this review, I'm using the Intel Core i7 3770K flagship Ivy Bridge processor, which in fact has the new HD 4000 graphics. But you don't need to get the flagship model in order to use the new graphics unit. Cheaper CPUs will also offer the new graphics. Right away, I'll tell you the CPU performance doesn't affect the integrated graphics performance. So as long as you have the Intel HD 4000 graphics embedded, you're good to go. In case you want more performance out of it, you could also overclock the iGPU separately. For this review, I'm using the MSI Z77A GD65 motherboard, which I already reviewed earlier before. But now to the specifications. The Intel HD Graphics 4000 has a core clock of 650 MHz and turbo core clock of 1150 MHz. You assign how much DDR3 memory this iGPU is using in the BIOS. Of course, the new 22 nanometer architecture is used and DirectX 11 is fully supported. The bus width would be 128 bit. In GPU Z, the iGPU gets detected without any problems. The new 22 nanometer technology is used, and honestly, it has a pretty good amount of transistors. Under Subwender, it says MSI. That's because I installed the CPU and a MSI motherboard. Once again, it supports DirectX 11 and Shader Model 5.0 and uses DDR3 memory. This iGPU has 16 unified shaders. It has a 128-bit bus width and a bandwidth of 32 gigabytes per second. The iGPU is running on stock speeds as you can see. Nothing is overclocked. But now let's get to the benchmarks. This is my test system. As always, I'll start with 3 Mark Vantage at the performance preset. The iGPU scored 3383, which is pretty good. But playing games could be a little tricky, especially with these high-end games. I'm definitely not calling that score good, but also not bad. All I can say here is that the Intel HD Graphics 4000 is almost twice as good as the previous generation Intel HD 3000 graphics. Next, I tried running a 3D Mark 11 at the performance preset, but unfortunately it crashed. I tried that several times, even on the entry preset, but it just crashed. Then I ran the Cinebench Release 11.5 OpenGL test. This iGPU got an average frame rate of 21.69 FPS, but let's face it, that's not so good. Now to the Unigen Heaven Benchmark 3.0. I'm of course testing that on lower settings, we can't expect high-end graphics results. But still, since this iGPU supports the X11, I'll use this API. Tessellation disabled, shaders on low, the AF completely turned off, stereo 3D of course also disabled, the A is also completely turned off and I'm running this on full screen 1280 by 720. Here we get surprising results actually. On average I get 26.2 FPS, on minimum 13.5 and 47.9 FPS at max. It scored 659 which obviously isn't bad at all. I was really surprised. Of course I didn't max out the settings, but still for the settings I went with it's a pretty good result. Now it's time to run the last Planet 2 benchmark. I'm running it at 680 by 1050 yes you heard right and the rest is on the lowest possible setting. In test A I get 44.6 FPS on average and rank B. Seriously, these are some really good results considering I ran that at a resolution of 680 by 1050. Test B as always is a little heavier and you notice that with 39.7 FPS on average and still I get to rank B. At first I thought it would be impossible to run that benchmark, but instead it turned out to perform pretty good. Remember, this is an integrated graphics unit. In Firmark at 1280x720 and the anti-aliasing turned off I get 394 points, which can be considered as quite low, but it's okay. I ran this test for 60 seconds. But of course the frame rate looks pretty bad I have to admit, I'm getting roughly 6 to 7 FPS. But now let's get to the game benchmarks like Dirt 3 at 680 by 1050 yes you heard right. The settings are on low, not on ultra low, keep that in mind, but the MSAA is turned off. As the minimum I get 22 FPS and 29 FPS on average. Of course it's not good, but that could be considered as playable to many people. But I'd rather turn down to ultra low to get more frames per second. Battlefield 3 of course is a heavier and more demanding game. That's why I'm running that at 800 by 600 and everything else on the lowest setting possible. You really can't go lower. Here I got 26 FPS on minimum. 
41 FPS on average and 64 FPS at max. So around 40 FPS on average isn't bad. Of course the settings are horrible, especially when you can turn up the screen resolution, but still it's pretty good for an iGPU. The power consumption is also very very low when you use the integrated graphics and so this is a pretty nice thing to have. The Intel HD Graphics 4000 is a pretty good new integrated graphics unit featured on several third generation Ivy Bridge processors. It of course doesn't and also never will perform like a proper discrete graphics card, but considering we're looking at integrated graphics inside a fairly powerful processor, it's really good. Actually, you don't buy this type of graphic solution, no, it just comes with the processor you buy. You buy it for the CPU part and it's really nice to even see an iGPU on there without letting the CPU performance down. So Intel did a great job, gaming will not work very well, but as you saw it's possible, but not very enjoyable. And you have a very easy choice to make, enable or disable the Intel HD Graphics 4000 on your Ivy Bridge processor. For my part, I disabled it because I have a fairly powerful discrete graphics solution. Pros are, it delivers acceptable performance and has a low power consumption. For the cons I only have one thing to say, it can only run most modern games on low settings. Other than that I give it a 6 out of 10 and it's up to you, keep in mind it's an iGPU. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.